Good morning. Howdy. All right, you can hear me. Well, welcome, welcome. People are still coming in. Let's see, what time is it? 10.02, 39 degrees and fog. <laughs> I just need to do my best work in the fall. <laughs> Good. Look at that. All right, people are still coming in. Let me keep clicking these boxes. And uh, and thank you for uh, showing up in the fog. All right, good. <clears throat> Good, let's get started. March 29th, 2023, let's talk real estate. And here's a picture of the Hills District office of Century 21. Anybody know where Where's, that is? I don't. <laughs> um, it's in the Hills. I know. <laughs> Isn't that in uh, like Central California? I don't know. Close to uh, close to the San Francisco area. Okay, we can we can wrong. verify that. <laughs> we can verify that. Uh, but they have a beautiful office. <clears throat> um, a great example of rebranding. That's one of those companies that clearly jumped on the on the rebranding bandwagon at the time and did an excellent job. And we saw all these goodies at the at the conventions. And uh, that backlit, that backlit C twenty one sign. It's nice. Uh, it ain't cheap. I hope it's LED. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Watch well, on on YouTube. I wanted to remind everybody about the um, YouTube channel that all of these meetings are recorded, and immediately right after the meeting, I put them up on YouTube. And just go to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. We still have our our founding 13 subscribers. And uh it'd be nice to add a few to that. <laughs> I feel like the uh the old United States trying to get started. It's a bumpy start. Just, just 13 uh founders. Uh all the videos are here and uh a lot of good information in them. And if you miss the meeting, obviously that's what it's for. If you miss the meeting. I wanted to say something. What's that? that place is in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> it's and 321, the Hills District is in Australia. Yeah. It's in by Sydney, Australia. <laughs> nice. Well, they did a beautiful job. <clears throat> okay, that's our YouTube. And this is a great time to review some basic steps to listing and selling. Uh, what I wanted to say today was just a couple of things. Start with changing your mindset um, <clears throat> because of today's market. As we go into this new market, we cannot continue with the old thinking because things have changed. The number of transactions has gone down and the time on the market has gone up, uh, just to name a few. Remember the sales are a numbers game. You're going to have to talk to a large number of people in order to find the one person you want to do a transaction with. And today you will need to talk to a few more people than you did before. Remember to pre-qualify everybody to determine their motivation, and that's both buyers and sellers. Today, the motivation of a client must be significantly higher than it was before. So why is that? Because the rise in interest rates, uh, the fear that the media is perpetuating about the real estate industry, it's causing people to hold back. Be prepared to counsel your customers based on the actual market conditions and what their personal needs are. Then deliver a great listing presentation. You can learn how to do that right here. Follow the five point system, which will ensure you're thoroughly prepared uh, to win the listing. You'll appear to be the expert. You'll already know the seller's concerns in advance and you'll do an excellent presentation and be the obvious choice to be the person to list that home. Is only five steps. And finally, more important than ever, price the home correctly. 
take some time to do that CMA. Uh, this is so important now because the market is different. The public has not fully adjusted to those changes. Be prepared to carefully explain your rationale uh, and your comparable, comparable properties when determining the price. And remember, there's a lot of business to be done. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Well, congratulations on listings and closings and new transactions and needs and wants. And I think we had just a little less than 30 listings today. <clears throat> so anything new? Anything close? We have two new listings in Idaho. I think that's uh, Augie and Augie Baca and Jeff Jensen. Right. Right. Uh, uh, Nyeth closed her first transaction with uh, Century Twenty One yesterday. Congrats to Nyeth. Oh, congratulations! Was that one of those new jobs? Yeah. Construction. Yes. Congrats! Congrats! Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Um, um, I'm under contract for two, uh, representing buyers. Uh, we have a lot of scheduled closings for next week. I think we have at least four that are supposed to close next week. So Nice. Okay. Oh, and going back to Idaho, our, our newest agent in Idaho, Amber Silva, is, I don't know exactly, Shauna would have to say, because I know an offer kind of came in and they're working on that, but that's yep. cool. Still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, congrats to Amber. Mm -hmm. Is it a buyer? Yes. Buyer of a condo in, in Caldwell, Idaho. <clears throat> there's there's condos in Caldwell. That's right. Yeah. Now I didn't know that. There I are. didn't know that. I, I see that uh, Longview's gone to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite literally. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. Okay, any needs or wants? Any other, um, anything else? I would else? like more listings and I want more buyers. Okay, there's your <laughs> there's your needs and wants right there. I like. <laughs> well, it's true and that's why he's here. I want oh, buyers okay. specifically above 600,000. <laughs> Fingers can't be choosers. I, no, I know, I have buyers <laughs> lower. I want buyers higher. <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> no. Choosers are not beggars. Well, I'll, I'll work with them all, but if I'm going to wish. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, what's uh, how are we doing with this? I'm rooting for this yellow door house. Oh, you. <laughs> this yellow door, it's pending. It's pending. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on that. It's pending, okay. I think, for the third time. Wrong with it? So so are, are there nothing wrong with it? It's the people. Yeah. <laughs> the house is fine. It's the people. They're, yeah. They're not, they're, they can't make a decision. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's cute. That's sad. Yeah. Okay. It will sell. <clears throat> All right, well, let's go into, let's go right into how's the market and uh, real estate experts, that's everybody here. You know the current market conditions and you're able to explain them. And the interest rate is 6.6%. So I checked that last night on another website because money.com, I, I know the Fed made a decision. It was all in the news. Um, and I just wanted to see what effect it really had as of today. And this money.com is not current, but I did check it on another website, a couple other websites. So 6.6 .6 seems to be where it is. And remember, just because the Fed does something doesn't mean the interest rates go up immediately. Um, they're not connected directly uh, by any means. Well, some good financial news. Of course, the, uh, <clears throat> the rate of inflation is dropping and uh, inflation is what's driving all of these uh, issues. And so that's down. <clears throat> I posted the new RMLS for Portland Metro and for Southwest Washington. I wanted to run through, last week I ran through really quick the uh, Portland Metro, let's run through Southwest Washington. 
and just look at the graphs. If I can get these larger. <clears throat> here's the summary, but here's the graph. I guess what we want to first look at is new listings and have a look at the chart, active and new. And as I was looking at this, it's the orange, uh, it's the orange dots on the left, and they're just a continuation of the green dots over on the right as it continues. Um, it actually went up. If you look, if you were to look at it that way, it went up. It sure looks like it went down on the left. But uh, new listings actually, uh, so they decreased from last year by forty-five percent, uh, and they decreased thirteen percent from from last month. So new listings are down. It's it's not the greatest start to a new year we've ever seen, but it's uh, it's not um, it, it's kind of what we're expecting. Pending sales, a uh, similar story. Uh, the uh, the orange line over there on the left is how we're starting off the year. And there are 500 pending sales. This is Southwest Washington. And that's down 34% from, uh, from uh, February of last year. Uh, it is down 2% from, from January. So it's a straight line. So pending sales are, are hanging in there. They're off to a slow start. So here's something that went up. If we want something that's successful, is market time's going up. <laughs> market time... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, inventory decreased. Where did word market? Okay, total market time increased to seventy-two days. Yes, <laughs> great spin. Yes, there we go. There we go. More time to look. <laughs> yeah. Well, however, Kung and I both on our buyer side, um, the homes that our clients put offers on, my client didn't get the offer, and the home received eight offers still. Yep. Sa same oh. here. Working with multiple offers in my price range. Right. So the listing is hot or it's not. Exactly. It's it's interesting, isn't it? It's kind of kind of spotty, but it still can be very busy. That's really something. So overall, 72 days now. And now historically, that is a good number. That's a good number. Um we say, you know, nationally, twice that would be uh, an average number. So these are short market times still, believe it or not. Average and median sales price. That is, um, okay, comparing 2023 to 2022 through February, the average sales price has decreased 1.5% from 560000 to 552000 but the trend is still a strong growth pattern. Yes. Why well, we want to see the chart. <clears throat> so be good. Good idea to print these out. If you run anybody, um, when you're when you're dealing with a client, it's nice to share this kind of information. It looks yeah. they they see insider information. If this report, uh, I don't know who they make this report for. It's made for the media. It's uh, but it's a great thing to share with the. Uh, clients so have a look at that in greater detail and we have some interesting uh news from the nar economist about uh housing affordability what's happening there Kung? yeah uh let's see what they say housing affordability conditions improved in jra 2023 for the third consecutive month I guess it takes a couple months for them to process the information. Uh, at the national level, housing affordability rose in January compared to the previous month. And according to NAR's, this is according to NAR's housing affordability index. Uh, compared to the prior month, the monthly mortgage payment decreased by 3.3%, while the median price of single family homes declined by 2.4%. Uh, this is uh, making home buying more affordable in January. The monthly mortgage payment decreased by sixty-two dollars from last month. Let's see. Compared to a year, one year ago, affordability fell in January as the monthly mortgage payment climbed thirty-nine point three percent, and median family income rose by six point four percent. And uh, the effective thirty-year fixed mortgage rate was six point three five percent this January, compared to three point five one one year ago. 
and the medium existing home sales price rose 0.7% from one year ago. Mortgage rates have declined for the third consecutive months. Uh, if we look at the charts, uh, first one is the housing affordability index. As you can see, it got, went up. Uh, mm -hmm. Any number above, above 100 is good for affordability. Uh, let's see what they say about that. As of January 2023, the national index was back above 100, which means that the typical family can now afford to buy based on the median priced home. An index below 100 means that a family with a median income has less than the income required to afford a median priced home. So you want more than 100. That's correct. Okay. The income required to afford a mortgage or the qualifying income is the income needed so that the mortgage payment on a 30-year fixed mortgage loan with a 20% down payment account for 25% of family income. The most affordable region was the Midwest. Uh, the least affordable region remained the West. Uh, and the Northeast was the second most affordable region, uh, and the South was the second most unaffordable region. Okay, here's what I found most interesting about that. Um, the least affordable region remained the West where the index is 77.6, which means the median family income is $99,000, but to get the median house, you have to make $128,000 a year. It used to be a lot of money. And you know what? It still is. <laughs> it still is a lot of money. Yeah, houses in the West are definitely not as affordable as the other parts of the country. <clears throat> yep. Wow. Some of the highest. Right. Right. Um, let's see what else they say. Housing affordability had double-digit declines from a year ago in all four regions. The South has the biggest decline of 25.3%, followed by the Midwest. Uh, the Northeast uh, experienced a drop in affordability of 22.2%, followed by the West, which fell by 19.2%. Mm. But uh, affordability was up in all regions from last month. Uh, the region rose by 6.9%. Uh, West region rose by 6.9%, followed by the Midwest with an incline of 4.5%. Northeast increased by 3.8%, followed by the South. Nationally, mortgage rates rose, uh, uh, rates were up 20, 284 basis points from one year ago. And uh, one percentage point equals 100 basis points from 3.51% to 6.35%. So yeah, interest rates are up from a year ago. It's, uh, yeah. still pretty good. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. One last thing compared to one year ago, the monthly mortgage payment rose $1,807 from uh, 1,200 pretty much, an increase of 39.9% of $510. Uh, the annual mortgage payment as a percentage of income increased 23.8% uh, this January from 18.2% a year ago. Regionally, the West has the highest mortgage payment to income share at 32.2% uh, of income. And then the, the rest of the regions have lower. Uh, mortgage payment income. Um, mortgage payments are not burdensome if there are no more than 25% of income. So yeah, you know, we're at, we're sitting at 32.2%. <laughs> so still, it's a little high. Okay. Yeah. All of this is good information to know. Um, you know, just keep, you know, we want to make sure our uh, clients are aware of what's going on especially in our region. Yes, this this particular article is really good. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little dry to just read through it, but this this actually has it all in a nutshell. Really good explanation of affordability and what it means in real dollars uh, mm -hmm. to people. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, the West's uh, affordability index is not good. Um, Yes, I think information wise, was it a, that your income should be three times your rent or mortgage to truly be comfortable? Yeah, that's close. Yeah, mm. that's close. Okay, well, excellent. Thank you. And um, I don't know how to improve it. The way to improve it is to build more uh, to build more houses. I think that's uh, they, they just have to build more units. 
Okay, how's the market? Well, today, now pay attention to today because I've rewritten this. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let me open it up. Let me try to zoom it in a little bit. This one's hard to read. Ooh, good size, okay. Yeah, uh, Nick, how's the market in Portland? Uh, we are still seeing a slight decrease in home prices nationwide as interest rates continue to slow uh, trend upwards. However, this still continues to be a seller's market due to shor a shortage of available housing and signs of reluctance to purchase from buyers. Average days on the market is 71 days and the median home prices have decreased 3.7% over last year. The median home sold price in the metro area is 500,000. Interest uh, rates are currently 6.6 .6 and are expected to fluctuate over time. Uh, for sellers, this is still a great time to list. Uh, uh, while it is uh, still favorable uh, for sellers, buyers uh, also benefit from dropping prices and increased stability uh, of interest rates and greater time on the market. So that's down a little bit, 500. Okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, uh, I put sellers twice in the same sentence, so I will be changing that. But... Uh, uh, Cheryl, how is, uh, no, I'm sorry, Shauna, how are things in your area, Clark County and Vancouver? We are seeing a slight decrease in home prices nationwide as interest rates continue a slow trend upwards. However, this still continues to be a seller's market due to shortage of available housing and signs of reluctance to purchase from buyers. Average days on market is 72 <coughs> days and the median home price has home prices have decreased 1.2% over last year. The median home sold price in the metro area is 499,900. Wow, that looks like a sales price that I would put on one of my houses. <laughs> <laughs> Interest rates are currently 6.6 .6 and are expected to fluctuate over time. This is a great time to list while it is still favorable, favorable to sellers. Buyers also have benefit from dropping prices and increasing stability, uh, interest rates, and greater time on the market. Portland and Vancouver are $100 apart now. Wild. Vancouver went up and Portland kind of shimmied down a little bit and we're going to equal out there. That's so wild. It is. Yeah. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, Cheryl, how is, how is your area looking? Well, we are seeing a slight decrease in home prices nationwide as interest rates continue a slow trend upwards. However, this still continues to be a seller's market due to a shortage of available housing and signs of reluctance to purchase from buyers. Average days on the market is 83 days, and there are 195 homes currently on the market. Hmm. I don't think that's true. The medium home sold price in the metro area is not four twenty five. <laughs> this is not right. say, that went up dramatically. Yeah, if you're getting this from the RMLS, like most of the things in Callitz County are not in the RMLS, so the stat statistics. Don't this is anything. true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shimmy, shimmy yeah, off. The medium County home though. price is about hundred. Well, maybe three fifty something. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Shana. But it's a great time to sell or buy. <laughs> great, great. All right. And um, Canyon County and Ada County. Uh, well, let me back up here. So where did I get this? I got this from um, realtor.com. So that that's yeah, what it says. Not true. <laughs> well, all right. Well, they, they got it from somewhere. I don't think that, I mean, last week it, or last month, it was the average price was like 360. And it, I know it didn't go up to 425 in one month. Right. Hmm. Well, we have our manager that knew the region and was able to capture <laughs> for us this morning. Yes. And <laughs> and we'll be submitting weekly. Um, or I, If you could just give me a monthly report, um, okay. I can get better numbers on there. Okay. 
Awesome. All right, Canyon County and Ada County, home prices are beginning to show signs of cooling as buyers have pulled back due to mortgage rates increasing last year, which is starting to convince sellers to lower their sales price. Uh, the average days on the market is 73 days, and home prices have decreased by 4.5% over last year. The median home list price in the metro area is $525,000. The interest rates are currently 6.6% and are expected to fluctuate over time. There are still uh, more people looking to buy than there are homes available. So it's a very good time to list. Wow. So officially, Metro Boise takes the lead on home pricing in our markets. Isn't that something wow. on the median price? That's amazing. Yeah, that is wild. Wow. Wow. Okay. It's more affordable to buy in Portland right now. <laughs> this is the place to be. Why? Right. Yeah. If you can, you can win the bid, right, Dick? So, yeah, if you can win the bid. <laughs> and we tried, man. I've uh, read three in Oregon lately. It's not been easy. No, still not easy. Well, Nick, you wrote an offer yesterday, and um, you were going to call that realtor and kind of test the water before you wrote it. What did she say? She was very sweet. Um, she she just said, you know, you know, I, yes, I'm accepting offers and, you know, I have two right now. And that was kind of right. That was about two hours before the deadline. Um, and then we got our offer in later that afternoon um, and it had jumped to eight. Um, and then she got back to me the following day because I think she was waiting till the following, it was like seven o'clock the following day to go ahead and get back to everyone. And she's just a really sweet professional lady. She got back to everyone and she complimented me. Uh, she goes, well, I almost would have accepted yours just on how beautifully written it was. She goes, it was like the most amazing offer. But she goes, wasn't, wasn't the best though. <laughs> <laughs> beautifully written I offer. I thought that was an interesting response. Nick, who, who's your assistant? <laughs> oh, right, right, <laughs> right. Yes, we had a lot Good. of opinions on that. So I got a compliment on my offer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little more additional information for local stuff. Um, you should have, if you're a Washington realtor, you should have got an email just recently that um, is talking about how they're trying to raise the excise tax and how that isn't going to help make housing affordable. So you might want to take action and click that red button. Uh, absolutely, yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, yes, they they listen to realtors sometimes. Yeah. They do, this they is do. what our, our money goes for that we're spending 800, whatever it is a year for <laughs> association dues. Right. That's right. Uh, didn't look like I can log into 21 online. So I don't think that's going to show you anything. Um, Any word on the, on the Oregon governor's proposal of uh, making changes to the urban growth boundary law, that that another one that's 57 years old? I don't think there's a fit. I remember reading that recently. I don't think there's an official decision yet. I know that's on the uh, discussion board. Yeah. Okay, thank you. They just expanded Damascus Happy Valley um, dramatically. Yeah, 22 year fight on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's designed to fight over. <laughs> they don't want to make it easy to, uh, to expand it, but they're, you know, it's possible. They wonder, possible. They wonder why we have such a severe housing shortage. Well, yeah, exactly. We do. So if there's ever a time to open it up, Now's the time. Yes, I know they're looking at Washington County on the west side now, so. Okay. All right, I just wanted to bring up Accelerate because it's a good time to take Accelerate and it's a good time to do Go List. And uh, branches, uh, branches have done uh, the Go List as, a, as groups in the past. And um, I'd love to see that again. Something for the managers to think about is putting that together. Uh, hey, April 18th through 27th. That would be a perfect time to do this as a group. 
in my opinion. Let's see what the managers have to say. Yeah, <laughs> I know everyone has taken it. You may ask your manager uh, to do this as a group. Yeah, I will talk to everybody next week <clears throat> on our Vancouver meeting, see what they want to do. We've got quite a few new people. <clears throat> Good. And a go list and lunch and hang out. The good old days. The good old days, yes. In office. That would be nice. We're doing that. We're doing it. <laughs> okay, I have a I have a quick uh I have a quick video. It'd be quick, except we gotta go through some ads to get to it. Oh, Let's go through those. This is Brian Tracy, and he's talking about first impressions. It's three minutes long. Give us a little break. He's talking about first impressions. It's actually really good. Never get a second chance to make a good first impression. The fact is that when you first meet a person, he makes a judgment about you in approximately four seconds. And his judgment is finalized largely within 30 seconds of the initial contact. In a survey of the members of the American Personnel Association, those men and women who are responsible for hiring people for large companies, uh, members generally agreed that they made their decision to hire or not to hire a person within 30 seconds of the first meeting. So everything contributing to the way you look on the outside is important. If it's not helping you, it's hurting you. In fact, we generally assume that a person consciously and deliberately makes a personal statement about himself with every part of his appearance that he can affect in any way. Your clothes are responsible for 95% of the first impression that you make on someone because in most instances, your clothes cover 95% of your body. This is not a complicated thing, but human beings are extremely visual and many people are hired for a job or they get the opportunity just because they look good just because they've taken the time to turn themselves out well. Now, in the last few years, there's been a slide toward dressing like a bum, looking like a bum, looking like you fell off a watermelon truck and got run over by a car. <laughs> and so people think it's cool. It's cool to look crummy. No, it's cool to look crummy as long as you have no hopes for the future. Because, because people who are successful look successful. Because the way that we, we dress is a way of telling people who we are. This is who I am. This is the package, okay? It's the package. So if you dress like a bum, what you're saying is this is who I am. I'm a bum. If you want to entrust me with your money, then you deserve everything you're going to get, and it's not going to be much. <laughs> so therefore, because you are in complete control of your dress and grooming, how you dress and groom is a statement to the world about the person you are inside. And there's a rule that says if it doesn't help, it hurts. Everything counts really important. By the way, interesting thing is let's say you're working on the internet and you're doing all your business on the internet and say, well, nobody can see me. Okay. Do you know that if you get up in the morning and you dress properly, I'm not saying you wear a tuxedo or a formal dress, but you get up in the morning and you groom and you dress properly exactly as if you're going to an important business appointment, people can hear it in your voice when you talk to them on the phone. It actually comes through in your communication because there's, there's just something sort of electrical about the fact that you look good. The, 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 in, the BBC is very famous for its BBC broadcasters. They speak perfectly correct, high-level English. BBC broadcasters are required to dress in evening tuxedos in order to read the news on the radio. And yes, and they've done this for decades, and people listening to the BBC, one of the most respected news broadcasting organizations, can feel that the person reading the news on the radio is dressed well. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than just how you appear. All right. I thought that one was this, very interesting. Yeah, you know what's so funny is I looked in my closet this morning and said, I really need to go buy some new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really need to go buy some new clothes. And I'm still I shopping. Think, <laughs> yeah, let's go shopping, Kat. And it's fun. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um did you write that script for him, John? Yeah, you think I did because I've been oh, saying that for a long time. <laughs> yep. It's important to look nice. I it's funny because I'm going for an interview today to for a buyer and I really wanted something nice and I felt like 
I should go buy some more business suits because I like having more options. So I think it'll be a, this is a really good topic. Good, good. Well, okay. you know, and today, if you take the time, you'll actually be quite unique and you might stand out. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's that's true. That is true. It's another way to stand out today because, okay. you know, as, as cultural norms change, uh, you that's another way to set yourself apart. Uh, oh, this still this person still takes it seriously is what people are going to think. Particularly in our industry, and it's uh, we have gone to the uh, you know the bouncy balls in the office kind of vibe, but um, we're we're doing something quite unique, and I think we need to remember to to be more polished. That's right. That's right. Hundred percent. And that goes for me too, folks. I'm listening to my own words. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Shauna, you brought some material today. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to pull it up? Yeah. It's, I mean, we talk a lot about the market. This came from Dave Ramsey, who happens to know a little, <clears throat> a little bit about finance we could go a little bit more in depth to the questions that we get um, from our clients or for, from people that could potentially be our clients. Tell and, us a little uh, bit about this is so this is James Ramsey and I'm I'm very familiar with him. Uh, tell us a, tell us about him. He advises people on how to get out of debt mostly I think is what he's known for, right? Uh, he is yes. He has a he had a, a radio show is what he's famous for and taking questions on the radio and telling people to tear up their credit cards. Um, and really, for the people who were calling, that was exactly what they should be doing in every case: tear right. up your credit cards and never borrow another penny again for the rest of your life. Um, and he's a realtor as well, so yeah. And people listen to him and pay attention, so I think it's. It's good to review all the local stuff that we have and then just have a, a good knowledge um, from different sources as well. And what are what are the current real estate market trends? People will ask you that. And current the current real estate trends are going into going into 2023 are all about the market slowing down and approaching something normal. Year over year values are still rising and 2023 will be the year of pretty slow growth. Home inventory is still slow, but the data indicates that it will continue to grow throughout 2023. Um, which we all know that, and but other people don't know that. So that's our job to let them know. <clears throat> there are also some rising trends to watch out for. I thought this was really interesting. Buying and selling real estate using online services is starting to get more and more popular, which it has always done throughout all of our uh, history, but it's definitely not smart. And I like that he points that out because even not everybody knows that he's a real estate agent either. So he's he's telling people they should hire a real estate agent. So that's good information to share with people that you um that you know, your family, whoever, just everybody you know, you should be educating them. Do people know that he has a uh, referral service in his real estate? I do, but I don't know if everybody knows that. But he, if you log on to his website, he will find you a real estate agent too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very costly to be in that network. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've only known like one person who was in that network. I think yeah. Johnny and I met somebody, I can't remember who it was but they were in that network. <clears throat> yeah. Um, will real estate markets slow down in 2023? Yes, he says they will. <laughs> um, but we don't have to let that slow us down, right? Um, with, I mean, just because the market slows, market slows, market slows you don't need you don't to stock it. I don't know why. I don't know why. Somebody, somebody. <laughs> anyway, um, with both a growing supply of houses and overall demand, with both 
a growing supply of houses and overall demand for housing coming down due to higher interest rates. The market looks to be slowing down to something to resemble us uh, normal compared to the, the white hot performance of 2021 and 2022. Think about the coming year as a regular manageable fire instead of a gasoline fueled blaze. Still hot, just not as hot. So that's, you know, really a good thing to think about. It's, there's still a lot of business. It's just not going to be as easy as it was before. Um, is now a good time to invest in real estate? Answer is always yes. No matter what's going on in the market, real estate is always valuable. I've heard all different sayings, like it never goes to zero. Um, there's a lot of different quotes. This one is from Mark Twain, buy land. They're not making it anymore. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, still the average return on investments, 29%. Yeah. Yeah. So that takes us kind of into the next one is will property values go down in 2023? That's a question that a lot of people ask you, um, especially people, buyers wanting to know if they should buy now. And he's got a good answer for that. He says, if you want to scroll, it says, depending on which expert you ask, home values will either go up or down by a fraction of a percent point. That means the actual value will pretty much stay the same in 2023. So that's kind of encouraging. I feel like that's a lot less scary than what you hear other people talking about. You turn on the television. Um, are house prices going to drop? Not likely. Well, the, and I, I think that because I work in multiple like market areas, I can say that that's true. I don't, I mean, Dick talked about it this morning. We're seeing multiple offers in Portland and Vancouver. I think even in Longview, I'm not really sure if they are in Idaho, um, but it's, it's not likely that the prices are going to go down a lot. Uh, they're still higher than they were last year, and experts don't think they're going to go down anytime soon. And this one, I think, was the most calming, reassuring thing in here. Will mortgage interest rates go down? And real estate experts believe interest rates will peak in 2023, then they'll start to go down. So I like his <laughs> I like his uh, take on that. I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's nice to not think that the interest rates are going to keep going up and up and up. And let's see, are we in a housing bubble? And basically, he just quotes himself here. And, he, and it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, the current real estate market is nothing like the housing bubble that burst in 2007 and 2008. For one thing, the current supply of house, houses is way lower than it was 15 years ago. Second, there are super high demand for houses despite the market slowing down a bit. Going into 2023, there are millions more households in America than there were back then which leads to far more buyers chasing too few. I'm sorry, too few houses. A housing bubble like the one in 2007 and 2008 has an opposite problem in those areas. So people listen to Dave Ramsey. Uh, He's not usually wrong. I'm, I'm hopeful for, for our real estate careers. One, one other thing I'd add to that is apparently, and I think it's been mentioned before in these meetings, is um, uh, we don't have people defaulting on mortgages. Mortgages are getting paid at some of the best rates on time that they have in mortgages. Because people still have equity, right? Right. And they're not putting out terrible mortgages. <laughs> they, they kind of regulated just handing out mortgages. <laughs> so that kind of helped keep things stable too, it sounds like. Okay. I've seen a few hundred percent finance things coming across my desk lately, but hopefully that won't be a fad again. Right. Uh, oh, I hope not. Right. Not. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Where did you get this? Um, I just was Googling for information and I found it and read it and thought it was good. And when I see stuff like that, I save it. Okay. Okay. I was studying real estate. <laughs> She's always keeping up. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cheryl, did you want to share the screen for this or do you want me to bring something up? 
Um, either way, if you want me to share, I can do that. Well, you said you want me to have them both up at the same time. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, it's going to be switching back and forth, so. I can do that. Okay. You'll be you'll be able to tell when it's time. <laughs> How's that? Okay. <laughs> Which one do you want? Kind of small. The the um the thing the mindset one. Okay. That one. So well, obviously, what is the one thing that could stand in the way of your success this spring? Obviously, I think we've talked about this before, and since you know the subject is called mindset. I think you know the answer. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. It's, it's our your own mindset. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm struggling with what's happening with my, my screen here. Okay. So what do you want to do with your mindset for the spring to keep things going? It's sometimes, you know, especially if you watch the news or, um, you know, you're not as busy as you were last year. It's it's a little harder to be positive, but just remember to be positive and um, get a puppy, get a puppy, <laughs> take the puppy for a walk, take walks, do it, you know, do those stress busters. Did you things. say hit get that your puppy? <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you have to do. <laughs> take so a walk, funny. stay positive because, you know, it's not going to help to get in a negative mindset, being positive. Is going to help you do the things you need to do. Be careful with the things that you say to yourself in your head. You know, when you get up in the morning, if you start in like, oh, I don't want to get up. Oh, it's mm -hmm. raining outside, gross. And and all those things that sometimes we can get in the habit of saying, um, it has an effect on you. You wouldn't be saying that to other people, you know, to try to get them motivated for the day. So... Take control of your own thoughts and emotion and uh, stay positive. And then another thing is be intentional. Ask yourself, what is your intention for the day? For the day, And, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? If you find yourself doing something that's not productive, you know, make sure you check in with what your intention is for the day. Basically, you know, we wake up every morning unemployed. Right. You need to find you need to find some work. So be intentional and focus on what you want. Don't focus on the distractions. It's real easy to get distracted, especially, you know, when you're not real busy working. It's easy to get distracted doing things that aren't productive. And, you know, we know what those things are. I don't have to go into what they are. But just, you know, don't spend your time on Facebook or whatever those things are. Yeah. Give your attention to the positive things, the productive things that are going to get you some business. Some yeah. things, we've been talking about these things in our office to um, keep our minds focused and positive for the, you know, the spring that's coming up and getting some more listings, all those things. So um, we've been talking about having our morning routine and sticking to it. Yeah, I and was doing mindset on that this morning. It's just like the more you do the certain things, the it more it just becomes a habit for you. Yeah. You know, remember those goals and schedule. And then if we switch over to the other one, the rock star agents, those Morning routines of 12 rock star agents. These are multi million dollar agents here, and they all have morning routines. And you know what? Guess what? They're all different, and nothing is right or wrong. Most of them get up early. I mean, I think there's one in there that doesn't, but they work late. So, um, but most of them get up early, and most of them do certain things, but they all have different things that they like to do. If you look through these, you know, here's one, the first one, Alina, she gets up at six o'clock and she touches base. She has overseas clients. So at six o'clock, they're awake over 
over there and she talks to him. Then she How goes cool back is that? And, huh? How cool is that overseas? Yeah, right. We could, you know, once I had a client in Australia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, C21 referral. Right. Right. I had one in Australia and one in uh, Great Britain. Ooh, yeah. It's great to be a brand. Our brand is in 88 countries. That's right. It happens. So she does that and then, um, you know, then takes a shower and has coffee. So that's probably not a lot of people's morning routine, but she does, you know, does the things, does makes her appointments, all that. Another one, like, I like this one with uh, Talia. At 6.30, the alarm goes off and she says, Alexa, play happy music. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so she is... Um, was it that I say one thing that I am grateful for before getting up. I woke up today. I'm grateful. Okay. She's grateful for waking up. That's a good thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell Google to play nice music. <laughs> yeah, oh, there okay. you go. All right. You know, it's all, all the different things. Um, you know, then she talks about trying to put her phone down. She checks her emails, all different things, picks out her clothes, always dressed to impress, which we just talked about um so it does all the things and there's people that um you know do morning meditation quite a few of those um i don't need to go through all of these and there's some people that do instead of a daily schedule they do like one day they they do calls all day long and the next day they have any showings that they're going to do scheduled or whatever anyway they have different days for different things so well, here's an he has to get up at five o'clock and he has to drink coffee all day long. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that do. <laughs> yeah, can do that too. <laughs> as long as your dog is okay with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, there's a lot of them. They're really interesting to go through and look at them. Yeah, and they are. Everybody does the different things and they talk about to some of them talk about what they do the night before, you know, a little evening meditation before they go to bed that helps them when they wake up in the morning or write out their schedule for the next day. So in the morning, they know what they're doing. Anyway, the morning schedule, that's what we're working on in our office this week. <laughs> so, no. Right, Jennifer? Is Jennifer there? <laughs> Took a nap. You know, you could do little morning, <laughs> Kuhn is going to like laugh at me at saying this, but you could do morning yoga in your little yoga studio mm -hmm. office. Yes, yes, we could. He we loves have that I mentioned done... yoga every day. Century 21 <laughs> yoga? Yeah. Yes. Cherry yes. yoga. Cherry yoga. yoga. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got a big open, open space concept. There's room for yoga mats in there. Yeah. We've had, we've actually had um, like a group meditation, be not here in this office, but our old office. I remember doing that before. It was pretty funny. Bob thought we were crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. we were good. We got there super early, which was, you know, that was a whole thing in itself, getting to the office real early. And then we do that. That wasn't the type of success I was talking about. <laughs> Well, just getting to the office early is good, but we were calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made us feel better. That's yes, that was successful. Right. Okay. So anyway, morning routine. Have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get one. There's 12 examples there. And then stick to it. That's that's the hard part. It's sticking to it. Yep. Consistency. Yep. And I was I was just reading to reading one of the uh, big coaches real estate coaches yesterday and their message was done beats perfect getting things done is better than you know always trying to get everything perfect before you get it out and so then you never get it out um you can get yep. stuck in that <laughs> just do it do something whether it's putting out the you know social media post or e sending out emails making the Good. calls whatever it is you're doing Right. Perfect never happens, happens, but exceptional can. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're never going to get it perfect anyway. So do something. Um, and then, and have the systems to have some sort of, and a system doesn't have to be some complicated thing. It can be a checklist. That can be your system every day, a clipboard with a checklist. Um, and then be sure to visit those once in a while and redo them, adjust them as you need to. Uh, another thing in your mindset is be the expert. We talk about that all the time. Right now, people are confused. You need to let them know what's happening. Yeah. Um, I think they're almost always confused. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right oh. now, I think realtors are confused too. So <laughs> true. Yeah. So and use the use the charts and information from the meetings that we have. All those different things. This one talked about um, good buyer demand happens when rates are six point five percent or lower. So we're right right about there. <laughs> You can find a program to show them that's less, less than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what else is it? Talking? Oh, this is another thing. Another education for buyers, another chart. 48% of homeowners are mortgage rich. So they have, everybody has equity. Most people have equity right now. Um, and that's something you can use to help them want to sell and buy something else. Here's the one one of the things that Shauna just talked about. This um these are from KCM of course. I think I've pulled these charts before, but they use usually five or six different sources to ask what's going to happen. And this one they're talking about they they get like five or six different sources and then they average them out and make the charts. Um, and so they, I don't even, what does that say? Maybe the house prices this year will go down slightly, 1.61% or whatever. And that's nationally. Over here in the West, probably not at all. But then look at the next four or five years. You can tell people that even if the house prices did go down this year. They're, they're still going to go up, but at a more normal normal rate. Yep, they're going to go up. Yeah, that's. They may not be going up 20% or whatever, 16, 17% like the last couple of years, but. Isn't know. it eight, like 8%, 6 to 8% is a normal type thing? Um, I don't remember that oh. chart, <laughs> but yeah, I think it is right around. That's what I always remember saying what was normal. Yeah. So, and they're always going to go up eventually. So yeah. never a losing thing. Anyway, those kind of things help. When you're talking to clients, um, you know, be positive and then have the conversations. Talk to them about the expires of FISBOs. That's how to, one way to get conversations. Talk to them about their equity um, and talk to the people that bought the, aren't happy with what they bought in the last couple of years. Get an accountability partner or a coach and keep your word to yourself. Make sure you, if you promise yourself you're going to do all these things, make sure you actually do it. Okay. And we're out of time. Well, good stuff. So somebody just um, chatted that Cheryl Van Cleef says everything will be fine. Yes, everything <laughs> will be fine. It's official. <laughs> it's official. Meditate on that. I had, right. I had a meditation this morning that said all is well. Is beautiful. <laughs> That's right. I had a I had a fraud That's alert fraud yesterday, alert. so everybody keep an eye on their credit cards. I had to cancel yeah. my credit cards yesterday. Oh, no. oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. All right. Well, good message today. Uh, a lot on mindset, and mindset is probably the one thing that you can control to uh, yes. improve things. Perfect. So, all right, Thank you. everybody. We'll see you next week. And remember, we're here every morning at nine o'clock, and we have some very valuable sessions. So, uh, if you haven't done that before, uh, check it out. One Pat. question, Pat. Carl, what time's yoga? <laughs> I think Thanks. Nick is in later. charge of yoga. He can do that, you know. Six in the morning. Monday mornings. <laughs> well, don't say that. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yoga with Nick. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.